But this is a difference from when I was here a month or so ago. I'm surprised, I guess, I really should pray that the Lord night and day that somebody invented the cassette recorder. We get letters every week, 10, 20, 30 letters of people that have heard our tapes and our ministry has done something for their lives in places we've never been and people will never see. So uh, I was a little shocked tonight when so many people had heard my testimony that had never met me. But then there was a lot of people that Paul's left. Uh, he's been gone a long time. If you will, take these out. You want to take some notes probably on them. There is one on the back of it. I think all the, are the colors the same everywhere with the sheets? I can go by color. On the yellow sheet on the back, front, whatever, you got it too. Um, tomorrow we're going to be, this is the sheet we'll be using tomorrow, we'll be using all the rest of them tonight. And uh, I want to correct something, it's not the pastor's fault, the people who prepared it originally, that's Ephesians 6.12, not 6.14. But we'll be, this is what we'll be teaching on tomorrow night, hoping that um, we'll have a large bring in of materials that we'll be talking about tonight to destroy. But I'll start with the yellow sheet, and I want you to write a scripture text across it. Revelation 18.23. At the bottom of the scripture it says, For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, and for by thy sorcerers were all nations to see, talking of Babylon. There's no better scripture I know than the word of God to describe the Illuminati, which is what we'll be talking about tonight. And we're going to start, I want you to get out, you can lay them across your lap, Find the three pyramids. I think it'll be impossible to lay them side by side because on a purple sheet there's two of them. But we'll do the best we can with what we have. And take out the Sphinx. Now most people do not understand the Illuminati. How many people here have ever done any study on the Illuminati before they heard of me? Okay. How many have done some since they've heard my tapes? A couple, okay. Boy, are the rest of you in for a surprise tonight. I don't want people to listen to me and walk out of here and just accept the things I have. I kind of like it when people go out of here and say, boy, he's nuts. Because they'll go and they'll try and research to prove that I'm wrong. And the more they research, the more they start believing me. It is impossible to research history and to research the conspiracy and to research the Illuminati without coming away a solid believer. As a, the brother who prepared these, Brother Tom Berry said, he went to, through almost 2,000 books for 20 sheets of notebook paper filled with notes. That's how well it was hidden. How many people have a set of encyclopedias at home, a good set? So home tonight, look up the word Illuminati. In some of the encyclopedias you will find that it existed but does not exist now, and in other encyclopedias you will find that it existed and still exists now, but they don't tell you anything about it. Before we go into it, I want to give you a reading list, okay? Now, I want to explain a book before I give its title, and I want you to choose carefully as to whether you want it or not. I don't want you later getting mad at me because I recommended it. It is not a Christian book. It is not a political book. It is an Illuminatus book. The book was ordered, written, and produced by Philip Rothschild, the leader of the Illuminati in this day and age. It was ordered, written by a woman named Ann Rad. And she was at that time one of Philip Rothschild's mistresses. It was written some 12 years ago. She was already a well-known author, and her books sell nationwide. Mostly people who read them are communists. And she wrote this book. It was supposed to be a novel. It's 1,100 pages. So if you don't like to read, don't buy it. And it was written as a novel, supposedly, but it is a code book. And within the book is a step-by-step -step plan to take over the whole world by taking over the United States. Now, I'm going to say many things tonight that a lot of people will try and go out of here and say that I'm anti-American. No, I'm extremely pro-American. I couldn't be that until I became a Christian. But I'm extremely pro-American. I am just anti-government that exists within America today because it is not the government of the people any longer. And I'm pro-people government. That's a term misused by communists a lot. I'm sorry if you're upset that I use, but that's exactly what it says in the Constitution. Oh, this is what I've been waiting on. I'm glad he brings it. I know what's in it. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time. Now, the power of the Illuminati, and I'll give an explanation. The Illuminati is as following. Okay, first, most people found the Illuminati 
in things that have crossed their path. People found it in the occult, and mistakenly they have said, aha, the Illuminati is the occult. Then they have found it in the Masons, and they said, aha, the Illuminati is the Masons. Then they have found it in politics, and they said, oh, it's politics. So they found it in the international banking system, or they found it in Zionism. So they list it as just being that. Actually, it is all these things, and much more. They have found it in the Mormon religion. That's because the leaders of the Mormon religion are high echelons in the Illuminati. They have found it in the John Birch Society. That's because the man who leads the John Birch Society is both a high degree Mason and a Mormon. But it is all these things, and its par is finance. If you would take its finance away, which is impossible, Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you the name of the book, and I just realized that. I started out, I'm getting ahead of myself. The book is called Atlas Shrug. Oh, Atlas, you know, Atlas supposed to hold up the world? Shrug, like you shrug your shoulders. Atlas Shrug. Now, this is the warning that goes with it. I'll be talking about occult books tonight and how demons are in occult books and in their music and so on. This isn't so with this book. They didn't place a spell on this book because they did not want people to buy this book other than those told to buy it within the occult and within the Illuminati. They are extremely mad because just this year alone they sold several million of them, mostly to Christians, and they don't like that. In fact, they've tried to stop printing it, the people don't want to stop printing it, they're making so much money. The bad thing about it, though, is that since it is written as a novel, it has some passages that uh, I think might belong in Hustler or other places. Maybe out of 1,100 pages you might count five that are this way, you can tear them out and throw them away. They're just stuck in there to hope they're stuck in there on purpose to keep Christians from reading the book. So if you should get to a passage that uh, is a little something you shouldn't read, just turn to the next page, it'll be over by then, and you can go on with the story. Now, if you don't like to read, skip the first 200 pages. The first 200 pages is exactly the way most people in the world are. They're very boring. No, actually, they're the conspiracy from people in all the walks of life talking about this incident happening and that incident happening. and, and uh, you know, it's very boring to the fact that it lets you know that it's the conspiracy that's planning the incident. It's like reading the newspaper today. You don't really know what's happening behind it. But after about the first 200 pages, eight chapters, nine chapters, something like that, it starts showing you that everything that is happening is conspired to happen. And uh, I'm going to give all these things, and I want to say something before I give the rest of the reading list. The common name for the Illuminati is the conspiracy or the great conspiracy. Now, until... We lost the school system to people within the Communist Party and within the organization of the Illuminati and so on. You were taught in your history classes, and some people can remember this if they want to confess up to being that old, that history was taught that it happened because somebody conspired for it to happen. Then we didn't want in this nation anybody to get ideas that maybe our government was a conspiracy. <clears throat> so they... Uh, decided to start teaching that it just happened because it happened. You know, World War II happened just because some people got mad. World War I happened because some people got mad. The Depression happened because uh, we bought too much too soon without enough money. They did not want anybody to get the idea that it all happened because somebody conspired for it to happen. But I hope to accomplish one thing tonight more than anything, that I will change your attitude, that I'll set new forms or patterns or whatever in your life that you will walk out of here and when something happens you'll go, now I wonder what they're really up to. Really? Okay. And we'll be talking about a few things tonight. I want to start with the yellow sheet. Now there's something missing on the yellow sheet. I want you to draw a block. No, don't draw a block, I'm sorry. Under the First National Bank, write Federal Reserve Act or the Federal Reserve Commission, FRC, FRA, whichever way you want to write it. You can abbreviate it or whatever you want to do. All right. Now, if you'll look at the pyramids, let's start with the one that says organization. Now, there's no way to preach a sermon when you're giving a teaching like this. I'm going to play school teacher tonight. If some of you find it boring, you happened in the wrong meeting because you might as well think that you're back in high school or going to college or whatever because that's about what it's going to be like tonight. I'm going to give a lot of facts. I'm going to try and leave enough time that we can have some questions because there's no way I can say all I'm going to say tonight without leaving some people in confusion. Pastor disappeared. There he is. Did you turn that air conditioner on? It's hot in No, I don't feel nothing. <laughs> Can't put this many people in a building like this without starting something. Okay. Start with the one that says organizations. And if you'll notice on all the pyramids, the first three blocks 
are exactly the same. Now, if you've heard my testimony, you know that I came from the Council of 13. Now, I want to stop, take about three minutes to explain the doctrine of the high part of the occult. The, first, the last four levels of the occult, or the last three levels of the occult, the fourth, fifth, and sixth level, and most of the modern cults today, particularly Mormonism, believe the same thing. How many people ever saw a movie called The Dunwich Whore? Nobody ever saw that movie. A couple people saw it. Okay. And I think um, Sandra D was the star of it or something. Okay. That was probably one of the strongest movies truthful about witchcraft and their beliefs that ever existed. Now, there was the original occult Bible, witchcraft Bible, was called the Necromonicon. There's only three copies in existence today. One is in the town in, in St. Petersburg Cathedral in the USSR. One is in New York City. No, I'm sorry. One is in Glasgow and one is in London. I saw when it was on, the one from the London Museum was in New York for a while. I got to hold it and look at it and so on when it was in the occult. Now, from that, the Book of Shadows, the occult Bible, came into existence. Several books have been written from the Necromonicon and are in many Christians' hands today, which we're hope that will burn before it's over. Now, according to the Necromonicon, the beginning of the world happened that man or mortals, if you watch the witch, you know the difference between witches and mortals, that mortals or everyday earth men, women, and so on, kind of descended from the apes and so on, and that at the beginning of this world, the son of the creator of all the dimensions and universe came from the dimension that the gods dwell in. They came here by, believe it or not, flying saucers, and that they mated with the people of this world, and their children were the witches. And this is actually found in a book called the Book of Enoch, which contains the Book of Noah, which contains all of this garbage. Now, according to it, the little people <coughs> were the witches, the fairies, the hobbits, the elves, and so on, and they were the dwellers of this world. And then through intermarriage, they started becoming everyday people. Now, the, the son of Lucifer was called Adam. Now, this is exactly, except they don't call it Lucifer, that is in the Mormon Bible. And that Adam being the father of this world, and Eve, they also called Asherah, Diana, Isis, Aphrodite, uh, many names, Hector, Selene, the, in other words, the mother of creation, was his wife. Now, according to this doctrine, the people that came to this world were the gods that lived on Olympus and other places of high altitude. <coughs> And that when the Rothschilds, back in the about the 17th century or so, the gods started living in the Rothschilds. They had chose them as the purest family in the occult belief. And through the Rothschilds, making them gods, not mortals, not witches, but gods themselves, they created the Illuminati. Now, I might throw in this and we'll discuss it later. They believe that Adam is alive again today and is ready to rule the world. With peace, by the way. What else? Now, if you look at the pyramid, the capstone is free from the pyramid because the capstone is the Rothschild, and they do not consider them human. They consider them God. And the I is the father god, Lucifer. Now, the Council of Thirteen is right there because they are the Rothschild's private ministers. The Illuminati functions as all of the pagan governments used to function of Babylon, of Moab, of uh, Egypt, of Greece, of Rome, of Scotland, of Ireland, and so on. All the pagan governments function the same way. The priests and priestesses of the temple told the rulers of the government, like the pharaohs or the Caesars or whatever, what to do, because they were told by the gods what to do, and the pharaohs listened to them. Now, in this case, the gods are the Rothschilds. So if while I'm speaking tonight, and if you heard my testimony, wonder why can one man so young in witchcraft and so on tell governors, and senators, and sometimes even presidents, what to do. It's because they belong to the Illuminati, and the Illuminati is a pagan government that listens to them because they don't give the orders. They simply repeat the orders that was given to them by that capstone, capstone called the Rothschild. Now, we drew the three pyramids that make up the Illuminati, and you can study them later. But there's one that I want to take before we go into the yellow sheet. I think it's on the purple one here. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. Let's take organizations real quick. I want to read you something. Now, I know we have some Masons here. I'm going to get you again. Now, many of you know that I did a book for Chick Publications called The Broken Cross. 
We've written another one that'll be out in about three months. Hmm, you wouldn't believe the threats that have come over this book. It hits the Mormons. It hits the occult. It hits the conspiracy and the Rothschilds. It hits the Masons. Man, I think they're going to have to go into a bomb shelter instead of a bulletproof windows over there. And it's really brought the infiltrators within the Christian church out into the public. And I'm going to read you a passage that came out in the book. I'm going to read you a passage from one of the highest books written in Mason. It is a book that is only supposed to be read by 33rd degree Masons and those of the 30th, 31st, and 32nd whose lives prove that they are not Christians that they can hand this book to. We have a copy of it. We photostaffed the copy and we have been showing it around the country. We have been getting people out of Masons right and left. Of course, we have been getting a lot of Masons mad at us too. But I'm not going to do what I usually do and really pick on the Masons tonight. I'm just simply going to read from two books of theirs and I'm going to let the Masons draw their own conclusion. That which we must say to the crowd is, we worship a God, but it is a God that one adores without superstition. To you, sovereign, grand, inspectors, general, we say this, that you may repeat it to the brethren of the 32nd, 31st, and 30th degree, the Masonic religion, religion should be by all of us initiates of the high degree maintained in the purity of the Luciferian doctrine. If Lucifer were not God, would Abaddon, now before I go on, I want to say Abaddon is found in Revelations for you students of Revelation as the keeper of the pit, the demon over all the rest of the demons. Would Abaddon, the God of the Christians, whose deeds prove his cruelty, profanity, and hatred of men, barbarism, and repulsion for science, would Abaddon and his priests culminate him? Yes, Lucifer is God. Thus, the doctrine of Satanism is a heresy, and the true and pure philosophical religion is the belief in Lucifer, the equal of Abaddon, Jesus Christ. But Lucifer, God of light and God of good, is struggling for humanity against Abaddon, the God of darkness and evil. They're calling Jesus Abaddon. They're calling Lucifer everything we believe of of Jesus, and Jesus everything we believe of the devil. And that's in one of their own books. Now. If you'll notice on this three blocks of any of them, you'll notice the Council of 33. The Council of 33 is the following. Within the Masons, there are the 32nd degree, then there is the honorary 33rd, and then there is the 33rd. I'm going to read you from the Lost Keys of Freemasonry, written by Manly P. Hall, a 33rd degree Mason, and, and co-authored by another man, a 33rd degree, and illustrated by a 32nd degree Mason, all still all were in the Masons. This was written in 1942. It's a book for Masons only. I'm going to read you the initiation to become a member of the Council of 33, the third, or actually the second highest council within the Masons, I mean within the Illuminati. When the Mason learns that the key to the warrior on the block is the proper application of the dynamo of living power, he has learned the mystery of his craft. The seething energies of Lucifer are in his hands, and before he may step onward and upward, he must prove his ability to properly apply energy. He must follow in the footsteps of his forefather, Tubal Cain, who with the mighty strength of the war god hammered his sword into a plow shed. Now, when I was saved, I complained, well, no, I want to say, what am I saying when I was saved? I didn't find this out until I was saved. When I was in the occult, I complained at our council meetings because the 33rd council had so much power and I felt it was unjust because I had proven myself so greatly to Lucifer, you know, which is our very proud people. And I complained that they didn't do the same thing. Now, we really didn't know what the Council of 33rd, 33 did or what their rights were because we were cult and they were Mason. When I got saved and saw this, I found out they did do the same thing. The warrior on the block right, remember I said they must prove their ability to properly apply this energy? The warrior on the block right is human sacrifice. They did do the same right. The very leaders that lead the Masonic belief, remember they said of the high initiates, they laugh at the Blue Lodge and those below them because of what they really know and who they really worship. We had a man saved about two weeks ago, in, or about three weeks ago now, in Jacksonville, Florida. It was a 32nd degree Mason. His father was a 33rd. His future father-in-law was a 33rd. His mother and future mother-in-law and fiance were all on the Eastern Star, and he was ready to perform the warrior on the block when he was saved. He told us, huh, can I come hide at your retreat? My own parents will set me up to be killed because I have left the Mason. Now, that's a 32nd degree Mason saying that. 
you think about it. All right? Now, go with me to the back of that purple sheet, the political organization. Okay? The Trilateral Council and the Council of Foreign Affairs. There's two separate blocks there, and it shouldn't really be. You can leave it this way. The Trilateral Council is the brain center of the Council of Foreign Relations. Most people do not know that America, without being an official member, is a member of the European Common Market. The Trilateral Council is the American version of the European Common Market. Every man in the Council of Foreign Relations and every man in the Trilateral Council believes that Lucifer is God supreme, has declared it, has taken a vow of secrecy, and has dedicated his life to seeing that Adam gains the world. Our president is a member of the Trilateral Council, and that is a well-known fact for people who dig into politics. So don't anybody, please, don't anybody tell me how great a Christian he is. Now, let's go over to the all sheet, to the Sphinx, and we'll go on with something else. I'm going to give you the rest of that reading list. I haven't forgotten. Just bear with me. When you study Atlas Shrugs, this book was written, as I said, 12 years ago. You will find out that you are reading the front pages of the paper today. The oil shortage that doesn't exist, they state that they destroy their own oil wells, that they hide their own oil so nobody can have it. They state how they destroy the coal mines and shut the coal mines down to shut the electricity down. They state how they cripple the country and no food is grown. It states how they pick and derail trains and so that no trains go. It states how they sink and pirate thousands of ships every year. We just recently heard a report by the Coast Guard down in Florida, how they're asking people not to sail out on pleasure craft in the Bermuda Triangle area, not because they believe in the Bermuda Triangle, but because over 1,000 ships were pirated last year and everybody on board was killed and dumped in the ocean. Now, they don't like to put that in the front page, as you see. That might call some people to wonder about some things. And this is all in this book that was written 12 years ago. And in the book, they gain control of the world by bankrupting their own businesses. The Illuminati owns most, I would say, 99 and 9 tenths of the stores that you walk into and shop in the gas stations you go to. And they are going to destroy them on purpose. They are in the process of buying up over the last few years all the stores they don't own. They bought up grants and they bankrupt it. They just bought up two guys and you can watch for them to go out of business. And they keep in business the ones that they've always owned, and they are going to bankrupt them before long and cripple them and destroy them. And the idea of taking over is to bankrupt the whole world where nothing is of any value and the currency does not exist anywhere, and then come back and solve all the problems. I heard the Gators, which are my favorite group recently, on a record in a live concert. The guy was talking about the energy crisis. He says, it's funny, it doesn't matter if it's the Republicans or Democrats, they get elected, they cause us problems, and then solve them so it looks like they're doing something. Now that's about the way it really is. And the book in Atlas Shrugged ends with the hero, John Galt, which is really Philip Rothschild, lifting his hand up in the air and drawing the symbol of his organization. It never says Illuminati in the book. In the air and says, we shall follow this symbol back. And the symbol that he draws is that. Can everybody see it for you? It's a dollar sign. Now, the dollar sign is only used in America, by the way. Nowhere else to represent money. It's almost 8,000 years old or probably older. It goes back and you can find it in the pyramids. And it means to scourge or to punish and through punishment to purify and make right. That's what it means. Funny that that's what we symbolize our money. Now, the Rothschilds lead the Illuminati. And in every country, they have a family with the head of that family being the head of the Illuminati. In the United States, we have the Rockefellers. David Rockefeller is the head of both the Council of Foreign Relations and the Trilateral Administration or Council, which is the name of the Illuminati within the United States. And these, there's more blocks in these things and more blocks in the pyramids, but we have placed the main blocks that would interest America. And the main source of finance for the Illuminati and the whole world, but particularly in the United States, is the Standard Oil Company. Now, I'm going to educate you about something tonight that the Illuminati hoped nobody would ever find out about. Of course, you can check out who owns Standard Oil. That's David Rockefeller. He's the owner of Standard Oil. Now, when we were in the Illuminati, we had to learn the hieroglyphics of the Illuminati. 
and we had to go and shop at the stores that the Illuminati marked themselves, marked their stores by. Of course, they own almost everything, but their main businesses they mark. And Standard Oil is the conglomerate that owns almost everything. If I told, I'm going to tell you the things they own, you're not going to believe what they own. It's that astonishing. If I ask most people today, besides Standard Oil, in fact, I'm going to, what would you say was the number one conglomerate within the United States? Anybody, tell me. Besides Standard Oil. Sears? That's Standard Oil. General Motors. That's the one I was waiting on. Standard Oil owns General Motors. They own Ford. They own American Motors. They own Chrysler. Now, you'll see Federal Department stores down here. Federal Department stores is Sears, Penny. A man very close, very powerful in the Illuminati, doesn't live too far from here, that owns all the Federal Department stores. He lives in Columbus. His name is Lazarus. Now, Lazarus owns Federal Department stores. Federal Department stores owns Gold Circle. They own Kresge's, which owns Kmart. They own just about every department store in the United States. Globe, Ontario, so on. They own Woolworths, which owns Wilco's. But Standard owns Mobile, and Mobile owns Montgomery Wars. You getting the message? Now, you can find out what Standard owns because they mark their signs with blue and red, everything they own. They also, in all of their oil companies, mark their oil companies with occult symbols. The main symbol is the sign of their god, the five-pointed star. Now, that would end up... The strongest version I've ever seen of it is the five-pointed star radiating rainbow colors because they know that Lucifer is the god of the rainbow, as they put it. And if you'll read Ezekiel 28, you'll find out he is. He does kind of radiate like a rainbow. He's covered with different colored jewels and so on. And this thing, they have Snoko with the arrow through it because that's the sign of casting a spell, the arrow. They use 76 because May 1st, 1776 is their birth date of the Illuminati. They use the sign of what witches practice in, this magic circle. When they write mobile, they write everything in blue, but they leave the circle in red. Most people don't even notice that, that there's a difference. The winged horse in Marathon, Pegasus, is the messenger of the god. It goes on and on. Holiday Inn is the star with the rainbows. And you just go on and on. The eightfold path of, of what a witch must master to be a powerful witch is the symbol of Denny. That's owned by them. So I see that they've got Sears separate from federal park stores. They really shouldn't. Shell Oil was the last oil company to go when Queen Julianne, which is a member of the 500 here, and her husband, Prince Bryden, and Philip Rothschild own 90% of Shell Oil. Gulf doesn't bear occult signs because it's owned by British Products, but British Products is owned by the Illuminati. Fazio's is owned by the Mafia that's controlled by the Illuminati. I don't know why Union 76 is separate because it's a member of Standard Oil. But this will give you an idea. And First National Bank is doing a new thing now. They're putting out 13 circles on their buildings with all the emblems of the Illuminati on them. I guess they want lots of power. They've used the 13 plus the I and plus all different things and so on. Chase Manhattan Bank is, and Bank of America are both owned by the Rockefellers. First National is owned by the Dows and the DuPonts and the Kennedys. And the Federal Re I am cracking up. I told you right Federal Reserve Act is on there. I'm not even looking tonight. The Federal Reserve Act, most people think is a mem uh, section of the United States government, does not. The Federal Reserve Act is a stockholder-owned company. It's illegal. It's against the Constitution of the United States, but nobody dares oppose it. Now, what most people don't realize is the Constitution says Congress will set our weights and measures and the values of our dollar. But the Federal Reserve Act does that. Now, the Federal Reserve Act was pushed through by Woodrow Wilson, the first Illuminati president since Thomas Jefferson. And he was smart. He adjourned everybody to go home for the Christmas holidays and kept 55 congressmen and senators back that belonged to the Illuminati. This was back before they ran Congress. And before that everybody could get back, he adjourned Congress, and they passed the Federal Reserve Act. You see, now they, got, they do it in a different way. They own everybody. Now, I want to say a couple more things, and then we're going to go into some things here on those signs, and then we're going to take questions. If you'll take up this blue sheet that says, Illuminati Plan for World Takeover. <coughs> All right. Look for, it says, Democratic President Gets a Laws Enacted. They're talking about J.C. <coughs> the first law that the Illuminati has, but they have not got passed yet, the number one law they want passed is called the, the, the Dow Gun Act. I'm sorry, the D's Gun Act. It's penned by Isaac Bonowitz, which you'll find on the Council 13 list there, but 
is supposed to really be penned by Martin Deeds, who led Jimmy Carter's campaign and is head of the National Handgun Control Center in Atlanta, Georgia. Now, most people don't know how important it is that we not lose our constitutional right to own a gun. The Illuminati will never be able to start Helder Skelter, which is on this thing, and you can read about it later, unless they can convince the people that they're not going to have to go from door to door fighting their way down the street as they burn and kill and rape and everything else. So they have promised them there'll be nothing existing in the form of guns in anybody's hands within the next year and a half. Now, I think that that's where the Illuminati is going to have a little problem because they had counted on passing the same law in Massachusetts as the test law, and they lost it. The law would have gave the National Guard the right to come into your home and the state police without a search warrant and search for your guns and confiscate them and arrest you if you had not turned them in with 60 days of the passing of the law. They thought that since Massachusetts was the strongest anti-gun state in the nation and since Ten Ted Kennedy supposedly wrote the bill himself, it would get passed. What were they in for a shock? It lost by a landslide, almost three to one. And that has thrown them in fear that maybe that same law would not be passed in the United States. Now, the other laws remove tax exemption from churches, House Bill 41. I spoke up when I was here before. By the way, did they pass that bill here, that one you were fighting, 1441 or They did pass it? They passed it? It was about tax or something here. They didn't come to vote? Okay. Now, 41, I understand, has been passed by now, at least by my information of what I can get. And it is supposed to pull the tax exemption from churches not belonging to the World Council of Churches or not having memberships of 500. And then, or what well, it doesn't say it's a poll, and it says that you must go to court and prove that you should stay tax deductible and you'll spend a couple million dollars in court so it's not worth battling. Then, those that keep their status, all except those belonging to the World Council, I mean the National Council of Churches denominations, which leaves out Independent Baptists, by the way, uh, all except them, no other exemption, you will have your name, your address, your phone number, just people coming in, we'll just keep on, uh, printed in every post office in the United States. Plus, you may have an IRS audit without any reason, just because you gave, gave to the thing. This is what the bill's about. The next is the Genocide Act. Now, this law was defeated eight years ago, and it's up for vote again in about, oh, three, four weeks. Now, it will send you to the federal penitentiary if you convert somebody from the faith that they were born into. I don't mean born again into. It's a copy of a law in Egypt that you must leave everybody alone to their own faith. That means if you convert a Mormon, a Catholic, a Southern Baptist, something like this. Nobody laughed on that one. <laughs> if you convert somebody from another faith, even if they're over 21, their parents may press charges against you and have you indicted, not for conversion of somebody, catch this, for genocide. And you'll stand trial, not for some misdemeanor, but for murder. That's right. And that one is being pushed through. Um, the next is the Presidential Martial Law powers. It's called the, Pre it's called the Martial Law Act. It's already been passed, I think it's passed last November, signed, enacted, in a law. Now, I want to say something. If you haven't heard about these, that's because you typically do something that the Illuminati counts upon. Now, people, I'm going, to, I'm going to try and change your life with this. When Congress is arguing over something about a law that they're going to pass or something they're going to do or somebody they want to fire or get rid of, start digging and find out what they're really doing that you're not hearing on the television. The only time Congress or the government argues or does publicity about anything they're doing is when they don't want you to know what else they're doing. It's a smoke screen. When they fired... I can't even think of a name now. That guy that was on President Carter's committee and so on, when they fired him, they passed the Martial Law Act while you weren't looking. They, when, right now, they're tr they passed House Bill 41 and they're trying to pass the Genocide Act without you knowing it while they argue over the Panama Canal. Now, we're never going to give the Panama Canal up, even if the law is passed, because we're supposed to get up in the year 200 and all the pol people in politics believe that we'll have a world government by the year 1980. So they don't plan on giving up. In fact, they don't even believe the Panama Canal is going to exist anymore. That it's going to be blown off the face of a map in a world war about the year 1980. So they don't care what they do. They're arguing over it. They could pass it right now if they wanted to. They're arguing over it and feuding and fussing and gaining as much publicity as possible so you won't know about the other laws that they're trying to pass. So when you hear something big explode, like the upcoming trials on the congressman and so on over the Korean thing, that's probably about the time that they'll probably pass the anti-40 act and finish up the Genocide Act. The Anti-Hoarding Act forbids you 
to own more than one month's food or one month's fuel supplies on the penalty of one year and $5,000 fine, one year in federal penitentiary. Now, I want you to go home and ask yourself why our government, we're not starving yet, we will be before long, but we're not yet, why they want to pass the law forbidding you to have more than one month's food supply in your home, why you are not allowed to stockpile food. We're not in World War II when you had to do this. We're now. There's a reason for it. Those are the major laws that you're trying to pass. Now, I got all that stuff out of the way. Now, we'll play school. I'm going to need a mic. Can I move one of these mics with me? Do any of them disconnect? Or? Okay, then I'll stand over here and point. Excuse me for pointing. All right. And in all of theirs, they stopped the Illuminati at the Rockefellers. They're, they always are after David and Nelson and these type of people as the leaders of the Illuminati. They're not. Second, they also say that the Illuminati, and it's in many books and I can prove it and in many tapes, that the Illuminati is a Zionist conspiracy. And it is not a Zionist conspiracy. The learned elders of Zion or the synagogue of Satan that were Jews that believed that Lucifer was the true God, okay, existed before the Illuminati, and the Illuminati came, you know, used their teachings to start the Illuminati, all right? But they're not Zionists. In fact, most of it, their leaders are Gaelic. The Rothschilds are Zionists by birth, but they quit believing in Yahweh hundreds of years ago. And uh, Weishaupt had already left the Jewish church, had been a Catholic and a Satanist, before the Illuminati was formed, and on and on. And they try to make the Rockefellers and everybody at one time a Jew, and everybody to change their names to hide they're a Jew, and all the Jews are the evil people, and they lead the Illuminati. Well, I have news for them. I said on the Council of 13 that runs that organization, and my family's never been a Jew. They're all from Scotland. So something's wrong in the translation somewhere. Uh, and I cannot believe that a member of the Council of 33 the second highest council within the Illuminati can run an organization that exposes the Illuminati. It just doesn't make sense. And the other strongest thing, we'll let that one go. That's a little too strong for anybody around here. But uh, all I can say is that the Birch Society is like the Masons. Now, I'm going to hit another group here. You're not going to like it. We've got some people here, but hear me out before you all want to lynch me at one time. It's like the Charismatics. And that's because the people, the little people, it's just like, okay, like the coal miners and like the farmer strike and like the Teamsters. You've got the people in it below who do not know who its leaders are. Okay? Now, where I sit, I had to hand money to people. Okay? And when I come out, people wonder, why are you mad at these people? These people are good men of God. Why are you mad at them? How would you feel if you had to take millions of dollars in checks and currency and dispose it to these people to do things for the Illuminati? Would you respect them as Christians? That's the idea. Too much money went into the Birch Society from the Illuminati for me to believe that it's an instrument against the Illuminati. Okay? I built. I say I built. I saw $35 million in two years go into the charismatic movement to build the four biggest churches in the United States that lead it, plus the full gospel businessmen. I saw $20 million given to Demos Securian one night. I can't accept it. Okay? I, I'm not a member of the John Society, nor a defender, nor a teacher of the John Society. I would say it's a record set because I had contact with him, documented he was okay. all the way through Rock Hill. Okay. I'm, wait a minute. Well, let me catch you up a minute. I, gotta give, I wasn't going to give it, but I'm going to go ahead and give it. Some of its biggest people, like the man you mentioned and Gary Allen, have both stood up and just literally ripped, by name, the Baptist Fundamental Church apart. And have you ever seen the blue book of the Birch Society? No Christian can read that book and say that book is a Christian book. All right? And I've heard them stand up and say they're fools in the fundamental church. Okay? No, I cannot 
And anyway, so let's pass over that one. I hit that, and I also hit a dozen other things at once. I'm going to get lynched by three different groups before I get out of here. But Ty, let me inject things, please. Yeah. Let's hold our questions to one per person. Yeah, really. We've got but, about 400 folks in here tonight. And everybody wants and, to ask uh, a question. After, after what I just said about the charismatics, I know they're going to want to. So, so let's limit them to one question. Yeah. What's a charismatic? Okay. A charismatic... Uh, let's put it this way. A charismatic movement, the charismatic movement to the outside people is the movement that declares the speaking of tongues. Okay? That is separate from the Pentecostal denominations and churches. Most people do not realize that the Pentecostal churches are not part of the charismatic movement. In fact, many of them oppose it. Alright? The charismatic movement in reality was one of three steps declared back in 1964 to do two things. While the main function was to destroy the fundamental church of any type. All right? The Masons was one, and the Charismatic Church was another, okay? And then the political maneuvers was the third. Now, the Charis most people, you know, they, folk, they get caught up in the Charismatic movement, they don't stand back and watch it. It has two distinct signs wherever it goes. If it isn't a fundamental church, it splits it every time. I have never seen any fundamental evangelical church stay the same after it came there. And the other thing it does is it unites all the liberal churches. It has brought the Catholics, the Lutherans, and the Mormons, even the Mormons, the Methodists, the Episcopalians, Presbyterians, everybody together. Now, I'm going to make some quotations. See, I'm not a charismatic, I admit it, but I'm not a Baptist either, so don't say I'm saying it because I'm a Baptist. I'm against it. I'm against it for one reason. I was on the Council of 13 and had to pay too many millions of dollars out to that organization to accept that it be of God and its leaders, since I know most of its leaders by first name basis. They used the charismatic movement to establish Jesus Rock. I had to deliver a $4 million check that was the second $4 million check that Chuck Smith, that created Calvary Chapel and Maranatha Productions, received from the Illuminati. And he knew it was Illuminati money before you go out of here and say that he didn't. The purpose of it was to build Maranatha Industries and Productions, which started Jesus Rock. Back when the Christian church was preaching against rock music, not knowing why, but preaching against it just the same, and throwing it out the churches, that scared the Illuminati and the occult world to death. At that time, they almost thought their end had come. Because if that really happened within the Christian church, the Christian church would have the biggest mass revival of souls in the United States that this world has ever seen. That's the purpose for rock music, to make sure that that never takes place. Now, okay, let me finish all this, because it's long, before any hands come rushing up. When that took place, they got scared. So they got smart, they thought, and they built Jesus Rock. And you can take some of the top Jesus Rock songs... And you can play the same rock songs over here, and it's the very same tune with new words stuck in. Now, I want to give you a, a key that witches know about. Okay? The sign of the devil's music, as they say of Lucifer's music, is not the words. It's the music. The power is in the music. The sign of Christian music is not the music. It's the words. That's why one song written by a group will catch on and will bless Christians' hearts and others won't. Have you ever wondered why the Gaithers are the number one group in the United States? It's not because they sang great, it's because the songs they write and the power in those songs. Now I know from being in the occult world the power in music. And I'm saying all this because I was the leader of Zodiac, I was going to get on this and I'm, I'm still taking care of yours at the same time, by somebody asked me about rock music but I'll do it this way. The thing about rock music was I was the leader of Zodiac Productions, which is the conglomerate that owns almost all of the rock booking agencies and production of concerts in the United States. Almost 95% of the groups that you hear in concert belong to contract to Zodiac Productions. Most of the friends that I have that are still in the world are friends that I met 
in the rock industry of people whose albums you buy today. Okay? The Illuminati doesn't produce rock music to entertain you. They don't produce rock music to make money. They don't need that money. They own everything anyway. They do it to put demonic influence in your life. The w music is a spell, and every witch knows it. That's why when somebody's saved out of the occult, and they say, as a saved pastor, what do I do? The pastor will go, well, burn everything that has to do with the occult. That's all the pastor says. And they'll bring in their rock records. Nobody has to tell them to do it. They were in witchcraft. They know what rock music is. Now, kids, I'm going to get you with this. Parents, don't pray that your kids throw out the rock music. It doesn't belong to them. It belongs to you. You are the head of the house, and although you think it belongs to them, according to God's word, everything in that house is yours. And you are the one that will face Jesus and say why you had it. The problem with Christians, particularly in a Baptist church, is that they don't realize that there's two judgments coming. One for the lost and one for the saved. And you will have to give account at the judgment seat of Christ for the things you didn't do and did do. You get it coming and going. So, if you think that you're keeping your kids from being rebellious by having the rock music in the home, have I got a surprise for you. They wouldn't be rebellious if you'd burn the stuff. Amen. So go home tonight and get rid of it. As I told the congregation last night, you can go home and count how many demons are in your home or at least the minimum number, by how many rock albums and 45s your kids have. Now, we started out on charismatic somehow. The Probably the strongest person in the charismatic movement is the man who led the charismatic conference in Kansas City. Now, Charismatics, I'm not picking on you as individuals. I'm picking on your leaders in the movement itself. Just like I'm not picking on Masons, I'm picking on the leaders of the Masons. Now, it's funny. I can come in here and I can tear down Billy Graham and nobody will lynch me. They may, somebody people might think I'm crazy, but they, they'll let me alone. But if I get in the Charismatic Church and I touch one of their people up here, they're ready to crucify me on a moment's notice. Now, I'm going to tell you this. The man who led that conference was a Catholic cardinal. But when they elected Pope Paul, lost by two votes. Now, I don't know if you know this, but Pope Paul's in critical condition. They're already talking about a new pope. And they're proclaiming him by a landslide, the leader of the Catholic charismatic movement. And, by the way, the leader of most of the charismatic movement. He said five years ago at the Notre Dame conference, it's a matter of public record, but they like to keep it from you. That give him 10 years, and he'll have all of the churches as one because of the charismatic movement. That's why the uniting of the liberal and the destruction of the fundamental. You'll never get the fundamental churches to unite as one. They can't stop arguing long enough to do it. <laughs> Which I praise the Lord for. Keeps us on our toes. But they are getting the liberals. Now, most of you probably sitting here would not be in this meeting unless Jesus was your Savior. But I have talked to thousands of leaders in the charismatic movement who say it is not necessary to repent of your sins and be born again. Demos Securian, this is what Demos believes, head of the full gospel business. He does not believe that you need to repent. He does not believe in a rapture. And he does not believe in a tribulation. He believes that a one world government is coming which Christians will lead. He has said over and over, if you receive the Holy Spirit and speak in tongues, and you belong to a church that is not preaching the word of God, don't leave it. Stay there. Don't leave it. Now I believe that the word of God says, come out from amongst them and be ye separate. Amen. And I also believe that the same as when a prophet prophesies wrong one time, you mark him and leave him alone. If a man preaches false doctrine, you leave him alone. Of course, you can leave me alone if you think I'm wrong about the charismatic. That doesn't bother me a bit. My job is to tell you what's happening. And I'm going to tell you whether you like it or not.
Do you help for it? You praise the Lord when I'm telling the Masons. Keep on praising when I'm telling you. The second most powerful man, or third most powerful man in the charismatic movement is Ralph Wilkerson. Ralph Wilkerson is the head, he is really the person who tells all the charismatic leaders, he's actually the number one, but he's supposed to be ranked third. He is the man who must appear before the Council of Thirteen to take back the orders to all the rest of the people in the charismatic movement. He is the pastor of a multi-million dollar church called Melody Land, one of the largest independent charismatic Bible schools and universities in the country. And they gave that man so much, everything that is there, the Illuminati bought and built for him and him knowing it all the whole time. The reason that he preaches that witches can't be saved and can never be saved is he's so scared that some of us will blab on it. And you're right, I'm doing it too. Now I have, if you think that everything else I say is great, then why would I lie about this particular, I have nothing to gain. I go into charismatic churches and say the same thing. I do. You think that's rough here? You ought to be there. My job, when I got saved, I told the Lord that everything that I knew the devil was doing now was going to let the world know. And man, I'm going to let them know whether you like it or not. Now, I told you the, the thing about it. And I can go on with more churches and more churches. The point is, you're going to have to question yourself about the thing. Okay? People are preaching a last day revival in the United States. The only last day revival we're going to get in the United States is the devils. You may not like it, but the United States is just like Jeremiah. Now, I mean, the United, the United States is just like Jerusalem and Jeremiah's day. They were all waiting for God to save them when the prophet was telling them that God was going to let them be destroyed because of the sinful ways. And one of the things said, you went off under every tree and, and committed whoredom with every belief there was and worshipped all the pagan gods there was. That's America. The biggest, fastest growing religion in the United States is the occult, and that's a fact. We're not having a Christian revival. It really tickles me how we're supposed to have two-thirds of the population as born-again Christians. I understood that almost 75% uh, of the United States were into witchcraft and the occult. Something wrong somewhere. People, something is terribly wrong. When we have a country that is so sold out to the devil in its way of life, and we have at the same time such supposedly mass revival of a Christian belief, something stinks somewhere. Now you're going to have to pray about it yourselves. But I'm telling you for a fact, you better question it. You better question what you're into and the little groups. And this, I don't know if the charismatics know it here, but see, I, I get all the charismatic books and read them and all the teachings, and I know what's taught by this leader and that. It's funny, they'll say one place, something, someplace, and something different, someplace else, and so on. I don't know if they ever know what they're saying. And they're really recommending that you not go to church. Most of them are teaching. Bob Mumford, Prince, and Basham, and others are preaching, stop going to church. To go home and hold your own individual prayer meetings in your house, and don't go to church anymore. I'm sorry, that's not in the Word of God. Amen. There'll be a day where you won't be able to go to church. But why you can, do it. Amen. That day has not come yet. And your home won't be safe when it comes either. Okay. I took the longest on it, but go ahead. Try to get these others. Uh, this card that you were talking about, that symbol on it. Now, would we, we don't have a choice. We've got to take it in order to... Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's back up a minute here. The Bible says that if you take it, you're lost. Okay, so this is the mark. This is the mark. If you're waiting for a tattoo, I've heard Christians say, well, I'll take the card until the tattoo comes. <laughs> Let's go about that tattoo for a minute. It says that an angel of the Lord is going to come down and, and seal God's people in the forehead and hand. Now, does that mean we're going to rock around with a tattoo? So if it's spiritual there... It's spiritual when we're sealed in the forehead and the hand with the mark of the beast. Now, I want to tell you something. The forehead means the mind, 
and the hand means the works. It always has in Bible prophecy, and it always will. There's something strange. We'll go over to Ezekiel. We'll go over to Isaiah. We'll go over to all the other prophets, and we'll read their prophecies in Daniel, and we'll say, oh, praise the Lord. You know, that, that means this, and that means this, and so on. We know that that the dry bones meant something, and the wheel within the wheel meant something, and the statue with the ten toes meant something. But we'll go over to Revelations, and we'll say, well, of course the Antichrist is not going to be a dragon with ten heads, and, or seven heads and ten horns, and so on and so forth. We don't really believe he's going to be that. And we'll call that spiritual. But we'll go over here and call something else physical. What makes Revelations different from the rest of the prophecy books? I thought it was the same God giving the prophecy. You can't do it that way. No, when this card comes, and you take it, you've made your stand. As for me and my family, we're going to serve the Lord. Amen. And you can't do both. So you're going to have to go home and ask yourself what you're going to do when you can't go to the grocery store. Thank you. Mm-hmm. It's not established. <laughs> you, I mean, they don't put a sign and say, here we are. Yeah. No, the witchcraft on the post is undercover. Totally. But it's, it's not so undercover that most people on the base don't know it exists. Okay? Yeah. Uh-huh. Right here. Um, you mentioned in your tape that re you recorded it before. Somebody asked you a question, and I think it was in fact, was Jimmy Carter the man mentioned in the sixth letter as being the son of his He is Adam. He is Adam. Uh -huh. Right here, the best. Oh. You said in your other tape that there was uh, different reasons for the fight, and I've actually interviewed different churches, and it was to put him to a denominate, or they all saw him as a promise against the church. He was a Christian, and he'll never eliminate. He'll never enlarge the farm. That was said about those boys that were rejected. Okay. Well, I can say the others. Um, okay. Melanie Land teaches that witches can never be saved, or anybody that ever practices in the occult. Well, we got a lot of lost people other night because a lot of people read their astrology charts. Uh, Ralph Wilkerson is teaching that there is no rapture. That the uh, church will either go through the tribulation or there'll be no tribulation. He hasn't quite made up his mind yet. Um, I want to think about these because I want to make sure I word them the way that he worded them. Okay? The Old Testament is not the ordained word of God that Luther, Lucifer inspired it, and that the Ten Commandments were not written by God or delivered by God to Moses, that Moses was fooled and the devil delivered him. I'd say that was quite a few right there. Now, these are things that he has said and is being taught in his Bible college. Okay? Over here. Same thing today. law and so on. Now, I would never place myself under law because one thing I learned in witchcraft was that all of the devil's power was through the law and that he was defeated by grace. But he is our accuser, okay? People get very hostile to me when I say that according to a Christian's life depends. Not, they're not immune from a witch casting a spell on them or demonic influence in their life just because they're a Christian. That's not a cure-all. I sum, sum it up, but most people don't understand what I mean when I say it. There are Christians that have accepted Jesus as Savior, and there are Christians that have accepted him as Lord. Okay? Oh, by the way, I wanted to add, it just struck my mind, Ralph Wilkerson also teaches that Satan and Jesus have been united. Okay? Um, now, the thing here about these symbols is it's like the Word of God. The Word of God, and I think that everybody will accept it here, unless, of course, you went to Melody Land, that the Word of God was inspired by the Holy Spirit through men. Okay? That it wasn't created by man. Man didn't sit down and pick it up. Any 
person with any intelligence can know it could have been put together the way it was put together with man's intelligence. You couldn't do it with a computer. Next, this was drawn by the devil's instruction. This isn't meat that was sacrificed to idols that came out of a thing. This was something that the devil said, do, okay? This has power. Most people don't realize how much power. You should have been a witch, then you know how much power. This has power to it because of the words that are in it and the power of those words, it has power. Now, we have found this very extensively. That's why some of the other translations are so bad because they have stripped the power out of it. Now, this jewelry was inspired by the devil, and all I can tell you is what I have seen, and that is that I have seen two things, that at a council meeting of the 13, it was decided that above all, more powerful than rock music, more powerful than Christians owning books and astrology charts and Ouija boards, was to place them this in their hands. All I can tell you is that demons follow this. They're not going to follow the slice of pork sacrificed to an idol, but they're going to follow the idol. I'm, I'm getting to it. I'm, I'm trying to lay the groundwork. I can't just jump into it. Now, let's take the two Christians. A person totally serving Jesus Christ as Lord is not going to have him in his life anyway. And that's where it lies. A Christian that's living... That's assuming he knows. Okay, what happens when he knows? Uh, okay, whether they do or not, all right? I think that Jesus stops being the Lord of your life when you know this and keep it. I mean, you're not going to set up in, in your house an altar just because it's safe to go into a pagan temple with a statue of Satan. Okay, so you're not going to set this stuff up. When you know, you're going to get rid of it. That's the idea, okay? If it was harmless to lordship Christians, I'd shut my mouth and let it go and keep the heat off my back. Everything I say in me is controversial one way or the other. You know, I could be a good minister. I could be another Billy Graham if I watch what I said. I just can't announce to do it. <laughs> it's not jewelry. The trick is jewelry. It's not the symbol. It's when it's cast in jewelry that it holds its power. Okay? Okay. Yeah. Well, they belong to the same bank. They belong, okay, Prudential, Chase Manhattan owns Prudential. Actually, Lords of London owns most of the insurance companies in the United States, and Lords of London owns Chase Manhattan, okay? So it's a chain. Uh, all states owned by Sears, which is owned by federal department stores, okay? I mean, you can, when you study conglomerates, you'll find out there's four conglomerates in the world and everything's owned by them. It doesn't matter what it's, who they say owns them, it's who really owns who owns them, okay? I, th I think you'll get the message. Uh, let me, I know you've got your hand up. Let me ask other people. If you've asked a question, hold it off and let me get some of the others. Yes. I'm a bit concerned about what you said. My concern is that um, if a Christian has eternal life, as the Lord says, and he receives that sign in the next year and a half or two, however it is by a credit card or jewelry, whatever you may call it, he said there's room that he's lost. And this confuses me because I understand that a Christian has eternal life can never be lost. And so I want to have to stand on eternal security because if eternal life is eternal, and you don't get lost by a sign or something else to take, so I want to put it in position. Do you believe eternal security is free? Okay. I believe in eternal security. I believe in everything that I believe in for reasons that I see. Okay? I believe in, I came to believe in eternal security in a very real manner because I believe in demon possession and demons in Christians' lives and I've seen hundreds and thousands, actually thousands of people that have been Christians originally going to witchcraft and no matter what they did, they couldn't be possessed. That convinced me right on the line. It may not mean anything to you, but it meant to me. No, I believe in eternal security. But I have a question for you. What happens if a Christian blasphemes the Holy Ghost? Well, we get into a discussion of what <laughs> Yes, we will. <laughs> My question is, though, is the person lost after he saved and he received that sign? That's a good question. Oh, yeah, I said it. I believe in eternal security, but I believe that if you knowingly blaspheme the Holy Spirit, you're lost. I believe that's what the Bible says, too. Now, you're saying that blaspheming the Holy Spirit says people back in Jesus' time were able to do that. They didn't have that sign. Or was that blessing in the Holy Ghost of Christ who's here on earth? 
blasphemy of the Holy Ghost can come in many ways. When you sit there and you take a sign that the Bible has said, now remember, we're not talking about the lost who might take it ignorantly. We're talking about the Christian who knows all the way through the Word of God that taking that is rejecting God. And rejecting God is blaspheming the Holy Spirit when you reject Him knowingly. I answered you. He can't? They can't? You're quoting one scripture and I'm quoting the other. It's something you've got to decide. The Bible says that if you blaspheme the Holy Ghost, you're lost. Let me ask you a question. Do you believe that a Christian can sin? Sure, but if he can sin, if he can sin, he may not be lost. But does he have to ask for forgiveness of the sin that he's committed after he's saved? All sins are forgiven. Does, if you sin after you have had your sins washed away, do you have to repent of the sin you've committed? I ask you a question. Do you have to repent of that sin? Thank you. That's all I wanted to know. That's not the Word of God. Right here. It's the Mooney movement connected with the Illuminati. The Moonies and the Krishners and the Way were all created for one purpose. And that was to pass the Genocide Act. Because when the Genocide Act was first tried to pass, the Christians fought it. This time it's being passed because the Southern Baptist Church and BJ and other places are backing it to stop the Moonies. And I don't know if they realize what it really means. It means that the same thing can be done to a Christian. Okay? Yes. Spiritualism? Have you read? All right. How much do you know about this book? Okay, I believe it. And I'm not making I'm not making fun of you. I'm going to use it to answer your question. Uh, no, no, ho, 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 ho. Wait a minute. Now let me say something here. Because somebody says they believe in God, big deal. The devils do too. They know that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. No, the Bible through and through, particularly Deuteronomy 18, forbids spiritualism, consulting of familiar spirits and, de and demons, consulting of mediums. It says in Revelation that these people shall have their part in the lake and fire, and before the blood covenant, it was punishable by stoning and death. All right? In fact, the only time that I ever know, and boy, was the witch surprised, that the real person ever came back and communicated was when Samuel came back and talked to Saul, and the witch was so surprised that the real Samuel showed up that she ran out of the place. Okay? No. Now, the spiritualist church is called the Christian Spiritualist Church of America. They believe in God, but their teaching is not the word of God. They don't believe in heaven, they don't believe in hell, they believe in reincarnation, uh, they don't believe in the devil, they don't believe in demons. I mean, there are over and over, they don't believe in salvation, repentance, born again, nothing. You know, no, uh, some time back, oh, about 70, 80 years ago, I guess it was, maybe even longer, uh, yeah, it was, it was before the turn of the century, well, that's about 70, 80 years, uh, they decided, the Illuminati decided that not everybody would ever worship witchcraft. So they pulled four of the major beliefs out of witchcraft. Spiritualism, okay, uh, uh, which created psychic healing, okay, and, and many other supposedly sign gifts and so on that were counterfeit. Um, they created astrology separate. That's when astrology started picking up. They created yoga, or TM, Transcendental Meditation, which was astral projection. And they created psychic powers of ESP and so on. Okay, and controlling somebody with your mind. They call it they call it parapsychology, telekinesis, and so on, which is the same thing as casting a spell. So they, this way, by giving it scientific names, but evidently the professors at the uh, Parapsychology Institute at Duke University never read Act 1616, where it said that a person with this power had demons, and when the demon was cast out, they lost their power. That would blow their philosophies out the window. But um, no, uh, it's definitely of the devil. Okay, back here in the blue. Oh, go ahead. No, it's all right, ma'am. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's appearing just like that. Yeah, yeah, it's appearing just like that. In fact, in Jerusalem, almost all of the license plates begin with six six six. What? This this right here appears. It is on the card. I've seen a copy of it. That's what I said a while ago. It is, that's why it's so funny that supposed to be a born-again Christian said, I designed the car and put that on there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Right here. Yeah. 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 Hey, uh, I'm going to ask the best question. Uh, maybe I shouldn't ask. <laughs> it won't be the first. <laughs> You want the Baptist to get me now, huh? No, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, you know, I'm not calling my Billy Graham or Paul Roberts, you know, I'm just saying. Yeah, quite a few. Let me say something. Have you ever noticed the bigger you get, the less fundamental you get? Now, there's an exception to that. I, see, in the occult, I didn't have any heroes. Now, I like John Wayne. You know, I don't know any better. No, my heroes are, are heroes that were enemies to us when I was in the occult. The most feared man in the world is a Baptist fundamental preacher by the name of Jack Howe. He is the most feared person. In fact, it was barely a month went by that that man's name didn't come up in some way. <clears throat> by several doctrines he preaches, an armed Christian for one, a preparing for the end times that Christians will see trouble before the rapture, the requirement of Christian retreat, the separation of the Christian from the world, that really scares the Illuminati. The Christian, when he starts becoming separated from the wor world, and when a man teaches the Lordship of Christ, that causes that. And they're scared of that. Because that is an enemy they can't reach. They're sold out. Okay? That's, that's the main reason. Also, he teaches on the Illuminati and other things. And he teaches it the way it really exists, not the way somebody in Macon, Georgia said. Yes? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Smith? I don't know his first name. I never met him after that night. I never met him after that. Huh? Oh, he was talking about all my testimony. In my testimony, I talked about the Baptist minister who prayed and fasted and ordered the demons to be silent and not have any activity in my life until I was saved. Now, all I know is his name was Smith. I don't even know his first name. He pastored a little Southern Baptist church over by the Air Force Base. But that's all I know. Okay? Yes, I'll go. Uh, when were you saved? Exactly what do you believe that means? Okay, I was born again, which is what I believe it is, completely a new person. Uh, let me explain what born again is first. I'm tired of people saying they're born again and not. Yeah. Amen. Oh, I like those amens. <laughs> born again is two things. One, it is the complete change of your life. If you are not a changed creature, you are not born again. Amen. And the only way to be a changed creature is through repentance. That doesn't mean that you are perfect and that you will not sin, and that you will not need continual forgiveness. It is unscripture for anyone to believe otherwise. Second, the fruit of the Spirit will be present in your life if you are a Lordship Christian. Now see, these Christians that are knowing just a Savior, I won't deny their salvation. I may frown upon it a little. I can't believe that a person can be a born-again Christian and not sell out to Jesus. But it seems to be done a lot. But I do know that where he is Lord of your life, the fruit of the Spirit will be. Now, that happened to me on May 1st, I'm sorry, May 1st, I got May 1st on the brain tonight. It happened to me on Labor Day, 1972 in San Antonio, Texas. Now, all my problems weren't solved that night, and I was born again, and I was changed, 